Gaming Vault presents 15 things hardcore players hate about Destiny 2. Bungie's Destiny 2 is out, garnering huge player numbers and even positive critical response. Of course, no game is perfect, and when you have a fan base as passionate as that for Destiny, there will always be the odd thing to hate. Let's take a look at 15 things that hardcore players hate about Destiny 2. Once again, none of these things make the game objectively terrible, they could either mildly irritate or insanely peeve those who simply love the game. No 4 player patrols One of the few things players asked when Bungie announced the Crucible was going purely 4v4 was, well, why not do the same for patrols? Granted, Destiny 1 only allowed for 3 players in patrols, strikes, and story missions, but surely Bungie could add one more person into the mix in the sequel especially since it is, no joke, bigger than the original. Unfortunately, it didn't, and we're left dropping a PvP player just to go exploring in the EDZ. Forced to play certain PvP modes One of the consequences of consolidated playlists is having to play modes or maps you don't like. Such is the case with Supremacy, Destiny 2's version of Kill Confirmed that many a player hate. This isn't a question of which is better, consolidated or separate playlists, but it's worth considering that Destiny veterans had this freedom to choose playlists before, and now they don't. Teammates marked objectives not visible on map One of the basics of an open world map, especially in an online title, is the ability to mark a point. Let's forget that you can't just mark any location on Destiny 2's maps, you can track missions and public events, but guess what? If you're traveling with friends, they won't see what you've marked. Considering the number of online games like The Division, Grand Theft Auto Online, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and whatnot that have successfully done this, it's weird to see it absent in Destiny 2. Teammates not visible on map. Even worse, you can't see your teammates' locations on the map. Decide to explore separately, find something cool and want to share in the wealth? Your teammates won't know where you are. It's left to you to describe the exact location. Having a mic and playing with friends doesn't make this impossible, but it's still highly impractical, especially when there is no north direction on the map. No rumble or mayhem. While we can understand Bungie waiting to add modes over time, especially if they're new, why did it completely remove rumble? You know, the only free-for-all deathmatch mode that you can play solo. For that matter, if there's a playlist called Quick Play for chilled out players, why not throw in Mayhem, the mode with rapidly charging abilities and supers? Again, both of these could return later, but it's just weird not seeing them in a sequel which is supposed to consolidate and improve PvP content rather than just remove it. No solo playlists or queue options. Even if there was no Rumble or solo PvP modes, Bungie has done solo queues in the past. In Destiny 2, you have no freelance playlist to queue for. Though they arrived fairly late in Destiny 1's lifecycle, freelance playlists would appear randomly at reset and seemingly disappear by the next week. In Destiny 2 though, they're just completely absent. This means that you're mostly… matched against teams in Crucible. Even modern multiplayer titles like Overwatch tend to mostly pit solo players against each other. If there are stacked teams, it tries to have an even amount of stacks on both sides. In Destiny 2, if you want to play either quick play or competitive, then prepare to face coordinated teams who have communication most of the time, whether you like it or not. New Infusion System Bungie has streamlined loot in Destiny 2 by a significant margin. Drops are pretty frequent, milestones and faction rep level ups ensure a steady stream of items and each weapon has a set of perks now. That being said, it took the infusion system of the previous game and made it heavily reliant on RNG. Now in order to infuse a legendary or exotic auto rifle or sniper, you need another auto rifle or sniper that's more powerful. In Destiny 1, any weapon within that specific category would have worked. Even worse, you can no longer use hunter armor to infuse warlock armor or vice versa. It's one of those confusing quality of life changes on top of everything that's good. Strikes not rewarding enough. Your average strike can take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes depending on the performance of your teammates, but it's generally considered a good route to garnering more power in the shortest time. However, for some reason, strikes in Destiny 2 don't seem to be as rewarding as public events. Completing a heroic public event can grant you a legendary or exotic ingram, tokens, and other goodies, and they take less time. What's more, you can farm the same public events again and again for consistent loot drops. Will public events rewards be nerfed or strike rewards buffed? 
time will tell, unfortunately. Grenade launcher damage. Swords, rocket launchers, fusion rifles, shotguns. Despite relegating these to the power weapon slot, Destiny 2 actually makes these weapons feel powerful. However, the same can't be said for grenade launchers. They simply don't do as much damage, unless you find that one legendary that somehow validates their entire existence. Considering how fun they can be, it wouldn't be too bad to buff grenade launchers. They're one of the newest weapon types after all, it makes sense to want more people to use them. AI Intelligence If you played Destiny 1 and thought you'd seen it all in terms of enemy intelligence, then Destiny 2 doesn't change that up too much. Which is fine, but many players have complained about the lack of any real tactics among enemies, even with new units and abilities being granted to races like the Vex and Fallen. And while you could meditate in order to replay story missions at greater power requirements, the same lack of intelligence still remains. Your only real danger is if enemies are several power levels higher, which feels more like a cop-out than anything else. Milestone Completion Notification Completing milestones in Destiny 2 is a great way to garner tokens and loot, but why is there a giant gleaming pop-up that says milestone completed whenever you do finish one? It's distracting, especially if you have subtitles on since it covers those entirely. Maybe a more transparent or smaller version of this notification would work well, because right now, it feels way too intrusive. Some missions and objectives lack variety. For every vehicle mission you get, Destiny 2 wants you to do the usual, run here, shoot this, scan that. Granted, there's more narrative structure, characterization, and cohesion to the overall campaign, and yes, you do get some platforming and interesting objectives from time to time, especially in the strikes, but in terms of variety, it's not necessarily the biggest step up over Destiny 1. Shaders and mods being single use. Look, we don't care if they drop continuously and give something extra to grind towards, or whatever. Forget about the pay to win implications as well. Why in the world are shaders and mods now single use like consumables? Mods in other games don't follow this practice because imagine what that would do to build customization. Shaders in Destiny 1 were permanent and could be swapped out as you pleased. Neither of these changes is fun from a gameplay or cosmetic perspective, though gaining bright ingrams from XP after level 20 is a good design move. Leviathan Raid No, we're not saying hardcore players hate the raid because it's not fun. Basically, if you've ever raided in Destiny, you know some of the problems that can arise. Lack of coordination and simple mistakes in key parts often lead to continuous wiping. The Leviathan Raid amplifies those issues all the more, since there is a huge amount of teamwork and understanding of the mechanics necessary to win. What seems cool and interesting the first time around will often lead to hours and hours of frustration later. We don't even want to imagine how the heroic version of this raid will be. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Bolt, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.